Travis Wayne Goodsell, Albert Pikes, letter to Giuseppe Mazzini in 1871, involved three world wars. I will start with the third world war. He says it must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the agenda of the Illuminati between the political Zionists. Now everybody thinks, oh, Zionists, that's Jews. And then when they say, and the leaders of the Islamic world, no. It's also involving Christians who believe in the New Jerusalem becoming Zion. <coughs> and so it's the turning of Christians against Islam. You know, anti-Muslim, <coughs> turning them into a war between each other. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam and political Zionism mutually destroy each other. They're getting us to fight each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on the issue, because, again, Islam does not believe in establishing Zion, they are Zion. They put their uh, mosque on the... <coughs> the Mount of Jerusalem in place of the temple and so there is no temple in Jerusalem to be destroyed in the Third World War there is however another temple built up because I'll get to it the war must be conducted in a way that they mutually destroy each other meanwhile the other nations once more divided on the issue will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical moral spiritual and economic exhaustion we shall unleash the nihilists and the atheists, and we shall provoke a formidable social cataclysm, which in all its horror will show clearly to the nations the effect of absolute atheism, origin of savagery, and the most bloody turmoil. Then everywhere the citizens obliged to defend themselves against the world minority of revolutionaries will exterminate those destroyers of civilization and the multitude disillusioned with Christianity there it is <clears throat> that's the political Zionism they're using Christianity to become radicalized as Christian radicals call them <laughs> call the others <laughs> the Dems are radicalized <laughs> Uh, whose deistic spirits will from that moment be without compass or direction. In other words, they're going to expose Christianity as a fraudulent religion. There is no God who will save them from the destruction. And thus they will become disillusioned. Where is our Christ? He abandoned us. How do they know that this will be the case? Anybody recall the Roman period that's covered in the Gospels. The Gospel narrators say, oh yay, all is great, Jesus, yay. But what about the Jews? They're Christian too. They call themselves Messiahs under Hebrew rather than Christian under Greek. The Jews were annihilated by the Romans their faith in God had abandoned them. That's why Nazi Germany did what they did to the Jews to try to abandon their hope in God. <clears throat> and so that's what this war is. It is leading to all evangelicals who are believing in QAnon, the atheists, the nihilists. That's the QAnon that the majority of the followers are Christian fundamentalists who purposely put Trump in to fulfill the Zionist political agenda for Jerusalem. It was all a trap and the Christian fundamentalists all fell in it. 
when we get to Mormons. Uh, and so, in this desperate, hopeless state, without a God to believe in, they will then receive the true light through the universal manifestation of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, brought finally out into the public view. We're getting to Mormonism. This manifestation will result from the general reactionary movement which will follow the destruction of Christianity and atheism. See, they're going to destroy atheism. They're using atheism to destroy Christianity and in the process they both get destroyed together and they both embrace Lucifer. Yay. <clears throat> Albert Pike, while talking about Illuminati, was also a Scottish Rites Mason. And you may say, oh, that, that's the same as Joseph Smith, right? No. The Smiths were York Rites. Brigham and Heber were Scottish Rites. And so in 1842, Brigham and Heber went to the Scottish Rites Lodge, where the Grand Master was, said, hey, we would like to have a lodge in Nauvoo. Can you make it happen for us? And so Joseph, not realizing that the distinction was still present, uh, became Master Mason of the Scottish Rites Lodge. And there's things I've covered that I'm not going to go into. So this was the tactic. This was the plan to destroy mankind. Alma, chapter 30. Here we go. Verse 6, And it came to pass in the latter end of the 17th century, I mean year, there came a man into the land of Zarahemla, and he was an antichrist. For he began to preach unto the people against the prophecies which had been spoken by the prophets concerning the coming of Christ. Remember what I read from Albert Pike? This is Korahor. Okay. And then it goes into the law to understand that Korahor was manipulating the law by saying, oh, it's just my beliefs. You can't punish me for my beliefs. I haven't committed any murder. I just believe that people should be murdered. No crime against that. And so, and 12, and this Antichrist, whose name was Korahor, uh, began to preach unto the people that there should be no Christ. Now remember, the Book of Mormon is in the learning of the Jews, the language of the Egyptians. Christianity is going to be destroyed. Judaism is, for the most part, destroyed with the few that are, are left remaining. Uh, there's a lot who are um, assimilated into the various countries who are not Orthodox Jew, but, uh, but yeah, Christianity is what's at focus here for World War III, to destroy Christianity. So pay attention, Mormons, because you've adopted evangelical Christian beliefs. My own mother watched Billy Graham on television when he began. And I asked her, why are you watching him? He's not a Mormon prophet. She says, well, he says a lot of things that are good. Yeah, so does the devil. <laughs> my, my, my own mother, and she served a mission. And so in those days, you know, if you served a mission as a woman, you didn't get married right away. <coughs> and oftentimes you became a spinster. Uh, and so, have you heard President Obama uh, talking 
uh, a couple of years ago <coughs> where he actually had the audacity to tell the American people audience who was look, listening to him that they shouldn't be looking for a Christ, a Savior. Yeah, it's not just Trump. And he's Korahor, then why do you look for a Christ? For no man can know of anything which is to come. Because it's a man who is coming under the Jewish understanding. And how could that be? How can you know of a man to come? That defies all logic. But the signs in the heavens give a day and hour of the future time. And that time is during now. Remember? No, of course you don't. You don't pay attention. You just get offended by my titles and then put a thumbs down and leave. You don't even bother to read the description that says put a thumbs down if you're a foolish virgin. Do you even know what the virgin refers to? The ten virgins. And no, not the ones you get in the Mormon church in section 132. Let's get to his You say, uh, let's see, you look forward and say that you see a remission of your sins, but behold, it is an effect of a frenzied mind. He's calling you mentally ill if you are a believer in your religion. And this derangement of your minds comes from the tradition of your fathers, which led you away into beliefs of things which are not so. And so he's saying that the seeds are false and bad because they don't produce the fruit. Remember? We're two chapters away from Alma talking about faith in the Word which is likened unto a seed. And you have to hold to the Word of God which means you have to identify what is the Word of God and what isn't the Word of God before you can grab hold of the Word of God <coughs> to make it to the Tree of Life and then eat of its fruit. Not just make it to the tree of life, you have to eat the fruit. There were those who fell away when they got to the tree because they didn't eat the fruit. You have to eat the fruit. And, uh, and so these are. this is what he's doing. He's saying, hey, a belief in a Christ to come has not come, therefore it's wrong. That's his logic. And he says, there are other things that you are also being led astray on that you have not produced the fruit from a tree of the seed of your beliefs <coughs> in the word to know if you're even following the right God. This is how he's tricking them and trapping them. And let's see. Where's the survive according to... Here it is, 17. And telling them that there could be no atonement made for the sins of man, but every man fared in this life according to the management of the creature, the pleasures of the flesh. That's how you're supposed to live your life, is in the physical realm. Whatever feels good, do it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Because we are living in a material world, and I am a material boy. Therefore, every man prospered according to his genius. Oh, like Illuminati. That Albert Pike talked about and that every man conquered according to his strength. And whatsoever a man did was no crime. So yes, you can outsmart somebody, cheat them, murder them with your genius. It's not a crime. You can beat them to a living pulp. Not a crime. 
See what he's done here? So, if you are the strong, if you are the more intelligent, you are the one that needs to survive. The weak in society, the ignorant in society, the poor in society, are the ones that need to be exterminated. They are the weak link in the chain. <clears throat> if you've been paying attention years before coronavirus, people were complaining that the world was overpopulated. That was one of the misinformation campaigns that was going around. I even caught PBS a couple of years ago with a little video clip where the guy was saying, well, we're going to have to kill off some of the surplus population in order to save the planet. Oh, PBS, my God. There is no threat to an overpopulation in the world. I've done the math. We can have everybody living in a hundred foot by hundred foot apartment building 16 quadrillion if we go up as high as oxygen will allow on land 16 quadrillion there is no population crisis we do not need to decrease the surplus population. That was a lie that was purposely spread to convince people. And then after World War II, what happened? Baby boom. And uh, once the baby boom hit, the government needed to clamp down on the baby boom. So what did they call in the propaganda commercials? The nuclear family. Two and a half kids is the cool and reasonable, acceptable, responsible thing to do. Because having two and a half kids will better ensure that the elderly die off in conjunction with the popula new population being born. Keeps, keeps the population stable. They didn't like the baby boom and so they, they tried to convince Americans to stabilize the population by uh, shaming parents uh, for having more than two and a half children. <coughs> and then don't let me get started on China and their murdering of babies in order to abide by the law that they established. And then they reversed it not too long ago because they're getting a shortage. But anyway, these were the doctrines of Korahor. Korahor turned into the Order of Nihors. And then the Order of Nihors was picked up by uh, Kishkumen and then by Gadianton. And then it was called the Gadianton Band of murderers, robbers, and thieves. And they infiltrated the Zarahemla society, rose up in religion and political ranks, took them over uh, with the assassination of the chief judge, and uh, caused the destruction of the Nephites in the end. And do Mormons see any parallels? Like I said, Brigham and Heber C. Kimball were of this Illuminati Scottish Rites organization. It's called the Illuminati as light bearers, which is Lucifer in Latin. The devil literally is the founder of it. But the devil didn't come down and lay his hands upon anybody's heads and I, I make you the president of the Church of Lucifer just like it wasn't Jesus who magically came down from outer space laid his hands on Joseph Smith and said upon your head I confer upon you the Church of Jesus Christ of that no doesn't happen that way the first vision was purposely written as a code because Joseph Smith did not get baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in order to stand in the presence of Heavenly Father as a high priest to enter into the Holy of Holies 
was code. <clears throat> and so, yes, Brigham and Heber, specifically Heber, because it was Heber who went to Brigham Young to bring Brigham Young after his wife died into the church. It was Heber who had possession of William Morgan's book, Illustrations of Freemasonry. And uh, it was Heber whose Wikipedia page exposes that he was the one who found out who they were. And that it was Joseph Smith Sr. Canandaigua, New York, guys. Do your research. Look up the Wikipedia page for Heber C. Kimball, Joseph Smith Sr., and Captain William Morgan. Anti-Mason is how they list it. William Morgan, Anti-Mason. And look for Canandaigua. Heber C. Kimball claims he went to Canandaigua to rise up to the seventh rank in the York Rites after just three ranks the previous year in a Scottish Rites area to uh, petition the Master Mason to advance and said that that was granted. He doesn't mention Joseph Smith Sr. Joseph Smith Sr., Master Mason, Canandaigua. You get a lodge of your own when you become a master mason because you officiate in the ceremonies. Illustrations of Freemasonry tells us all about that. That's why Joseph Smith got his farm in 1818 is because he became a master mason and they took care of him financially as a master mason. In the illustrations of Freemasonry you are taken care of, your family is taken care of if you by chance die they take care of their own and uh, anti-mason so this is the end of this video I guess but uh, the church has been infiltrated and now they're trying to kill us through the coronavirus Trump is purposely using herd immunity to exterminate us Nelson likewise for the church members Johann Adam Weishaupt, Illuminati.